Hello everyone, I'm Honoka Ara from Tohaku University. Today, I'm going to talk about the SARA's screening inspections in Fukushima through my experiences as its subject. This is today's table of contents. Before starting the presentation, I'd like to tell you about myself, a subject of the SARA test. I was born in the town of Okuma in Fukushima Prefecture. I've grown up and lived in Fukushima until I was 21 years old. Look at the picture. This is me when I was an elementary school student. I'm eating a delicious school lunch. I was raised on the food of Fukushima and used to play in the hills and fields there. When I was 10, British Japan earthquake and the accident at the Fukushima Light nuclear power plant occurred. Since then, many children began to undergo horrible decounter and thyroid examinations. These tests were initiated for two main purposes. The screening test started to track the health of the people because they were concerned that the number of thyroid cancer patients might increase, like Chernobyl. In addition, some people say that if we can prove the difference between Fukushima and Chernobyl scientifically, we can reveal people's anxiety. It conducted on children aged 0 to 18 with a promise that they would continue it for the next 30 years. The screening is to test people who don't show symptoms of disease and find people who are suspected to have disease. This means that the screening test will have the possibility to find the cancers and small cancers which will not lead to death. So, how was the inspection conducted at the time? As you can see, the thyroid tests were conducted in the classrooms and gymnasiums of each school. All classmates line up in the hallway in order of student number and everyone goes to the location together. It was done the same way as physical measurements of height and weight. I think the other children also think it is similar to taking physical measurements. At the time, there were also whole body counter inspections which is an internal exposure measurement at school. I thought that it was a set of tests or something like that, along with a Harvard counter. My knowledge at the time was that it was important to detect cancer earlier, so I thought that thyroid cancer was something that had to be detected as soon as possible. However, I never thought about anything more than that, such as what thyroid cancer is or how they examine it? At least, when I was an elementary school student, I don't remember any explanation from doctors or teachers about how the test works. I think that other students probably did not even have a clear understanding of what they were looking for in a thyroid test. Talk about decision making. At the time, I never actively made a decision to take the test. In the first place, I never even considered that there was a choice to take or not take the test. As I've said, it seemed like a physical measurement, so I thought it was natural to take it and follow the majority. In addition, we were only 10. We raised the decision up to our parents. The envelope from Fukushima Medical University contained a letter of consent and interactions about the test, but I've never read it myself. When the envelope arrived, my mother opened it and said to me, I'll send back the consent form instead of you. Then I just said, okay, mom, without thinking anything of it. My mother also thinks that she made me take it just because the document arrived and Fukushima Medical University recommend to take it. Then, five years had passed. I entered Fukushima High School and participated in the Japan-France exchange program. I researched the progress of Fukushima's reconstruction after the accident and future issues. As part of the activities, I learned that there were several problems related to thyroid tests in Fukushima, and particularly, I was interested in the field of medicine, so I began to learn more about them. At first, I read some materials on thyroid examinations published by Fukushima Medical University and many articles on thyroid examinations over diagnosis and screening. 
I also had opportunity to talk with Dr. Sanae Midorikawa, who was in charge of thyroid examinations at Fukushima Medical University at the time. In addition, I also spoke with many other professors who had been researching on Fukushima in various fields of research. Thanks to that, I could learn a lot about the research of Fukushima, and it helped me to consider the issue of thyroid tests from many different perspectives. I came across a lot of information and sorted it out in my mind. I remember that it took me several months to properly understand the benefits and disadvantages of thyroid tests. In my presentation, I explained basic information such as the methodology of thyroid tests, how to read test results and their meanings, how thyroid tests were initiated, as experts' opinions, why they started, and what they aimed for at the time. Also, I explained the dilemma of containing the test while there is a problem of diagnosis. The dilemma between containing thyroid screening inspections and stopping them is a big problem. To speak from the viewpoint of continuing. Some people insist we should continue just according to the original guidelines, which say we will continue until 2036. If we don't do that, we might not be able to get reliable information. Now, many people don't know much about thyroid cancer and inspections, and many people still feel anxious. So, if we stop it in this situation, we are afraid that some people might think Fukushima is considering something bad, or Fukushima found some bad results. Also, if we stop the inspection suddenly, people might feel dissatisfied or anxious. To speak from the viewpoint of stopping, some people say that Chernobyl and Fukushima are considerably different in thyroid radiation dirt. In the first place, the mortality of people with thyroid cancer is extremely low. Also, there are some risks to take the inspection. Considering these two aspects, at the end of the presentation, I asked the audience their opinions whether we should continue the thyroid test or stop, and I asked them to raise their hands. Wherever I give this presentation, I always take care of the following points in my mind. I try to make sure my presentation would not be an imposition of one opinion, and that I convey all the evidence equally for the opinion whether we should continue or stop the thyroid inspections. I try not to push the conclusion that we should or should not take the test because an important thing to know through my presentation is that taking the test is not compulsory. I want to convey the message that it is up to us to decide and I always hope that we'll be able to decide by ourselves based on correct information. I gave these presentations in Japan and France. Back in Japan at a workshop at Fukushima High School, I made a presentation to Japanese students who have been undergoing thyroid tests. The situation is that most students don't know the disadvantages of the thyroid test and don't know that they could choose whether to undergo it or not at their own will. They have been indifferent to taking it. At the end of the presentation, I asked our students to raise their hands. The question was, do you think Fukushima should continue the thyroid inspections or we should stop? This picture shows the students who raised their hands to answer that we should continue the test. In contrast, this picture shows the students who raised their hands to answer we should stop it. The ratio was 7 to 3. These were the reactions from students who listened to my presentation. They seem to somewhat understand the disadvantages, but even among them, have been undergoing the thyroid test, they think that, I'm fine, so the risk of the test is irrelevant to me, as if it were someone else's problem. Furthermore, many people naturally think finding disease earlier is a good thing, and it is better to take as many tests as possible. I also felt that it was difficult to explain the fact that there are some diseases, such as thyroid cancer, whose detection might be a burden 
and detrimental to the subjects. Many of my friends say that they will take the test because everyone else will take it, and they did not want to be the only one who did something different from the others. I realize that there is a unique sense of being Japanese, which is following the majority. Even though it is an examination of their own body, they cannot make the decision on their own. A guy also said, I think it is important to collect data in the world of science. We should research the association between radiation exposure and increasing the fines of thyroid cancers. However, medical research involving human subjects must be based on medical ethics. He might feel the risk is unrealistic, even if he might eventually be diagnosed with cancer, as long as he continues undergoing the test. In addition, our generation has been tested since elementary school. In most cases, the person who makes the decision to take or not take the test is not the students ourselves, but our parents. This may be an obstacle for us to recognize that we can make the decision. And even if they actually choose to take or not to take the test, they have to pursue their parents first to sign a consent form. This is why I strongly feel that it is essential to tell the correct information to the parents as well as students. I gave a presentation to high school students from all of our friends at the Radiation Protection Workshop in Dijon. Most French students have a background in science. The contents of the presentation were the same as the ones at my high school. At the end of the presentation, I also asked the French audience, do you think Fukushima should contain the Cyrus inspections or we should stop? The ratio was 4 to 6 and many of them choose no, as opposed to the results of Fukushima High School. I could see their faces clearly, and many students seemed to be thinking about it a lot, and still couldn't make up their minds. After the presentation, I had time to discuss with a French student more about it, and I asked for their opinions and reasons. Most students think they should stop the thyroid test and focus on the high risk of the test. On the other hand, some of them said, I think it's better to stop the test for everyone, but I understand that some people still have anxious. I think that the dilemma and conflict in the problems of cyber tests in Fukushima were understood by the French students. A guy asked me, how many Japanese high school students are undergoing these cyber tests? I explained the situation of the test from my own experience, that they are conducted in school the same way as a physical measurement test, and most students naturally undergo them so that no one remains in the classroom. The French students clearly had a sense of deciding for themselves and found it difficult to understand the Japanese sense, be conscious of their surroundings and following the majority even if it was their own test. The participants in the radiation protection workshop had science backgrounds, so they may have a strong awareness of the need to make their own decision based on scientific evidence. Fukushima scientists have problems that span a variety of areas, including ethical issues, problem with a instructional design of conducting the test, and the unique Japanese sense that they cannot make the decision for themselves out of concern for their surroundings, and the decision are mainly made by the parents. Through my own experiences of telling people about the dilemma of a scientist, I realized the importance of thinking of the existence of such a person. I want you to imagine a boy or a girl who happened to live in Fukushima at the time of the disaster and happened to be the target person of the thyroid inspection, then happened to be a patient of thyroid cancer. Such a person was generated 
because of taking the thorough inspection without enough information and thinking deeply. If they haven't taken the test, they may live without cancer. They may have to live full of anxiety and fear associated with the cancer for the rest of their lives. Now that we know this fact, I hope medical staff will focus more on taking care of these people who are still suffering from anxiety. In addition, I think the current system of thyroid tests should be reviewed for the future of Fukushima. First of all, I've been running about the thyroid test in Fukushima and think that enough information is not sufficiently provided to all subjects and their parents. Even if we receive a booklet, I don't think many people will bother to read it. All the more, we don't undergo thyroid examinations as a matter of course. We don't try to get new information anymore. I think it is essential for everyone to have a clear understanding of the benefits and disadvantages of the thyroid test. I believe that there will always be a certain number of people who will have concerns, regardless of the scientific basis and their level of understanding. Therefore, rather than stopping our thyroid test suddenly, I hope that the system will be changed so that those who wish to continue taking thyroid tests can do that and relieve their concerns somehow. In addition, we should provide an opportunity to consult with a medical specialist about the thyroid test on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and they can explain thoroughly and follow up with the patient. Also, thyroid tests should be provided at medical institutions individually, rather than all students undergo thyroid examinations at school, and if they wish to take the test, they can do so. I am now studying at Tohoku University, away from Fukushima. Once I leave Fukushima, I've almost no opportunities to hear and think about the thyroid test, even though I am a medical student. I'm concerned that the problems in Fukushima have become a closed issue that are discussed and researched only in Fukushima. Scientists may think that the thyroid test problem is a topic that can be researched only in Fukushima, which has been affected by radiation. However, as I told, this problem of thyroid screening extends to other fields. In order to solve these extended problems, we should ask not only researchers in Fukushima, but also researchers from various fields in Japan and overseas and consider them all together. Finally, I'd like to conclude my speech by wishing a bright future for Fukushima. Thank you very much for your kind attention.